Satellite imagery is very useful for a lot of purposes, from just visualizing the land to performing quantitative analysis. And there are a lot of free sources of satellite imagery out there, and I'm going to show you how to access one of those today, which is the Sentinel-2 dataset. To access Sentinel-2, which is uh, one of the higher resolution satellites with repeat coverage, we're going to go to dataspace.copernicus.eu. So dataspace.copernicus.eu. I'm just gonna search for this here in Google. You can see the website here and you can see some of the, the options you have. We're going to go find the Sentinel-2 data, but I wanna take you right through the website to show you how that works. So we'll just type into our address bar here, dataspace.copernicus.eu, and we'll go directly to the website. Now notice here, I am logged into my account here. You will need to create a free account in order to download the data. You can do that um, from multiple web pages here. Uh, you can do it from this web page, or you can do it from the browser. Next, we'll go to the Copernicus browser here. This will open in a new tab, and it's going to bring up a map that shows us the different data sources available through Copernicus and allow us to filter those data sets. Okay, so you can see the map here of the world. I'm going to zoom into an area that I'm familiar with and know when I might be able to get some imagery that is of interest to me. So I'm gonna zoom in on the United States. I'm gonna come up here to this area in uh, Northern Utah, Southern Idaho, where we see this lake, Bear Lake, very beautiful lake. And now what I want to do is I want to download some data. And to do that, I'm going to click on search here. So we have this, we have these visualize and these search tabs. Visualize will let us see the data that are available. So we can come and we can search for a date range here. Um, or a specific date, we can show the latest date, we can do a lot of different things. You see here that if I click show latest date, um, and I can click true color, uh, we're looking at imagery for the latest date, and it's going to show right up in the browser. You can see the data here is still loading, and we can see this green bar coming across the top that will show us when the data has fully loaded. Um, so that's how you can visualize the data. What I'm really interested in is actually downloading some data for analysis. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to search. And I'm going to select my data source here. I want to select Sentinel-2. Um, we have one sensor on Sentinel-2, which is the MSI sensor. And from that sensor, we have two different data products. We have level 1C, L1C, and L2A. Now, it's important to know the differences in these levels so you can get the download that is most correct for what you're doing. And I will explain these to you. So L1C is a top of atmosphere reflectance. What that means is the satellite is above the atmosphere of the Earth. The Earth's atmosphere inter interacts with light as that light travels from the Earth to the satellite. And so you're not getting it. The, so the atmosphere alters what the satellite sees from what you would see if you were on the ground or flying in an airplane below uh, the bulk of the atmosphere. Okay, so this is a top of atmosphere. It's not corrected for the atmosphere. Level 2A is what we call a surface reflectance product, meaning it has been atmospherically corrected to account for the effects of the atmosphere. So for most applications, you're probably going to want the level 2A data. Some of you may want the level 1C data, and you'll probably know who you are based on that description I just gave you. So I'm going to select Sentinel-2. I'm going to select the L2A data. I'm going to come down and select a time range. I want to select a time when I know things will be green, which I'm going to select uh, in 2024. And we're going to go into the month of June. And we'll just try to find all the images in the month of June. So my starting date is there. Um, and I'm going to go change this back to 2024, June. And we'll go to June 30th. Okay, now I've set these. I want to set a cloud cover percentage. I want less than 20% cloud cover. I want to be able to see the land surface. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to search. All right, and this might take just a minute to return the results that I am looking for here. Okay, so now we've got these results. We can see a thumbnail over on the side. Um, we can see the footprint of that image here. Okay, and I can zoom out uh, to see the full footprint of the image a little better. Okay, and now um, I can zoom to the product. I can add it to the workspace. 
or I can download the product. So if you'll notice here, we have the time. So we have 2024, 623, so June 23rd, um, June 18th, June 15th. Okay, so we can see all the images available that meet my criteria. And once I find the image that I'm interested in that most meets my needs, I can go and download that. So let's go over here and let's go ahead and um, download this one here. This looks about what I'm looking for on June 23rd. It appears to have the least cloud cover from the uh, from this thumbnail. I can visualize this and it will take a minute to load and show me exactly what that image looks like in the browser. Let's just give this a minute to load up. So there you go, you can see that our image has loaded and we can get a look at, at what this area looks like from that loaded image. All right, this is the image I want. Um, I'm going to go back to my search and I'm going to download this image by clicking the download product button here. Now this is going to take a little while. You notice that this product is just over a thousand megabytes, about a gigabyte. It's going to take a little while for this download to happen. Um, once this progress bar completes, it's going to open up uh, an option for me to save that to a file and I'll bring you back when we get to that point. So the download is ready now. I'm going to put this in my downloads folder. I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it sentinel 2 a uh, underscore or sorry I'm going to call it sentinel 2 underscore l2a and we'll save this right in here. It's going to come down as a zip folder. Um, it might take another minute just to download that because it is a large file. And we can open up the downloads here just to see when that gets done. Okay, so we can see that it is complete here. And it's a zip folder. I'm going to extract these files. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to show more options. I have 7-zip installed. If you do not have 7-zip installed, you can come and do extract all. Um, I prefer to use 7-zip and I'm going to extract the files. Gives me this option here and I'm going to say OK. And then those files are extracted. Now you'll notice here this is a .safe folder. That's the format that uh, these files are saved in. And actually what I want to do is I'm going to delete this real quick. And I'm going to extract these files one more time. And uh, I'm going to use 7-zip and I'm going to extract here. And this will eliminate that extra directory. So we have the .safe file here and inside of this we have all the metadata and all the data associated with the Sentinel files. So if I go into Granule and into this folder and into image data, um, now I have all these band data sets here. So I have band two, three, four, and eight. And you'll notice here that these are the resolutions. So band I believe there's two, three, four, and eight are 10 meter bands. There's, a, there's 20 meter bands, which are, we have those in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, A. Okay, so we have those sampled to those bands. And then we also have 60 meter bands. Um, and so we can have these bands sampled at whatever level we need to have them. All right, so there's where we get the Sentinel data. We now have this downloaded. We can now go pull these in and perform analysis with them in whichever environment uh, we desire to do that. So let's actually go and open up QGIS to take a look at some of these, uh, these data sets. Okay, so QGIS is open. Let's go to the browser and let's add in these files. So we can go to downloads and looking for the sentinel 2 a folder here and i'm not seeing it oh here we go sentinel 2a l2a and this will take just a minute to open there's a lot of data in there 
and we'll just keep going down into our granule folder and our image data and let's pull in um, some uh, R10. So let's grab bands two, three, and four. Let's add those in. And there you can see that we have our image data. Now let me go um, real quick and uh, we're going to load in a base map. Let's close this down. Let's go to XYZ tile. Let's pull an open street map just so that we can see we're in the right area. And if we turn off these layers here, pull this down there, uh, you'll see that we are in the right area. Okay, so now let's create a virtual raster. So we can go to raster, miscellaneous, build virtual raster. We're gonna select all three of these. So we got band two, three, and four. We're gonna say, okay. Um, we can make this the lowest resolution. We want to place each input file into a separate band. And here we're going to, we can just save this as a temporary file and I'll, I'll show you how this works. Let's go ahead and run this. Now we can close. And now you can see we have bands one, two, and three. And if we go over to layer styling and zoom in, you can see we now have some color imagery there. Okay. Um, We want to do this as red, green, blue, and right now we're showing blue, green, red. So if we reverse this to three, two, one, now we get the true color image. And you can see we have that satellite imagery that's just pulled right up there in QGIS. All right, so that's how we can easily get the Sentinel data, download it, and bring it into QGIS for visualization and for analysis.